welcome to this week's video. Now, coming up in this week's video, I must be getting old because I've just done a gig in a museum. I do my first gig in about 15 years on the pedal steel. I bet you can't guess what song this solo's from. I managed to get my Van Halen guitar out and take it on a gig for the first time in a while. And I accidentally stand on my phaser pedal, but it sounds quite good. So the first thing I'd like to do is welcome you if you're a new subscriber to the channel. My videos over the last couple of weeks were about the Quad Cortex, which seem to be very popular. Now this video isn't strictly a technical one, it's more of a vlog about my life as a uh, professional musician in the UK. But I am going to include some technical bits very vaguely and I'm going to talk about the Quad Cortex because I used it in a way that was different to I'd ever used it before this week in some very strange ways. So that's what this video is about, so keep watching and I hope you enjoy it. First gig I'm going to show you was from that little clip I showed you the intro of me playing in a museum. Now the reason I was playing in a museum ABBA won the Eurovision Song Contest 50 years ago last Saturday. That was what catapulted them to fame. They did Waterloo and they went from being a completely unknown Swedish band, winning that competition and then, well, we all know what happened. The rest is history, as they say. I live on the south coast of England, quite near Brighton, and they won the Eurovision Song Contest at the Brighton Dome. And right next door to the Brighton Dome is Brighton Museum. And they put on, to commemorate the 50 years, an exhibition all about ABBA 50 years ago and it was a really interesting exhibition they did all these brilliant photos of these young fresh faced members of ABBA um, before and after the competition you know not knowing what was to become of them how they were going to become sort of global superstars and it was a very interesting exhibition um, and I was singing I wasn't singing I was playing guitar with a singer called TJ Davis who was in Bjorn Again who were one of the really big ABBA tributes back in the 90s I mean they they actually played headlined arenas as well as supporting some of the biggest artists in the world. If we look at this photo here, there was actually a little bit of the exhibition which was about TJ and it showed her costume that she wore in Bjorn again and how she'd really loved ABBA ever since she saw them when she was little on the Eurovision Song Contest. Probably the sort of the uh, best bit of the exhibition, they managed to unearth the drum kit that was used and mimed on on the actual Eurovision itself. It was uh, borrowed from someone in Brighton. They, it wasn't uh, actually played, it was just mimed on because everything had to be on backing track for the competition. So I guess you can't have all those different acts coming on and miking stuff up. So they, it was just really a prop. But they found it, it was still in the family in Brighton and they showed Here's a photo of it with the uh, video playing behind it. So as I said, I was going to tell you about me using the Quad Cortex. Now if you've not seen my videos before, you won't know that I use my Quad Cortex quite a lot on acoustic guitar. I used to have a pedal board with all different pedals on, and then I realised I could do it all on the Quad Cortex, particularly when they introduced the looper. So that's what I use it for, um, but I've never used it in a museum before, and actually I didn't do a great deal of looping. Um, on this gig, which I shall come on to, which led to me having very sore fingers. but. I'm going to show you this, I'm not going to show you the full songs um, of us playing because you get copyright strikes on YouTube. If you play whole songs and you're not allowed to use them, then somehow YouTube detects it and I had two copyright strikes from Eagles songs and I nearly got my channel deleted so I have to be a bit careful. So I'm just going to show you a couple of intros that I played. But firstly I'd like to thank Glenn who sent me these videos. In fact he sent me videos for a couple of these different gigs and he was at at least three of the gigs I'm going to show on this video. He's a Big supporter, he comes to lots of my gigs and he goes to lots of live music in the area. We need more people like Glenn to watch stuff. Here's a photo of him wearing the costumes that were provided in the same room as we were playing in in the museum. So thanks to Glenn for sending me these videos and I'm going to start off by showing you Mamma Mia, just the little intro bit. This was the only looping I did, so I was doing the kind of dee -dee 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 and then played the tune over the top of it. So here we go. Then I had to work out how to play SOS, it's got a funny 3-4 bar in. Working these ABBA songs out, it made me realise how absolutely brilliant the songs are. I mean, I, they're so familiar, it's almost like you can't hear them anymore, but I look at them in a different way working them out. There's all these funny length sections, that, but they all sound completely natural. And this intro has actually got a 3-4 bar in. So anyway, this is just the intro, check this bit out. Where 
and then I had to work out how to play winner takes it all. I was fiddling around putting capos on, trying all different positions, and I think I got it sounding quite good. So this is winner takes it all intro. to the next gig now this was the gig where I was asked if I would play pedal steel now I haven't played pedal steel on a gig for about 15 years but a couple of months ago I was doing a session on it which I do from time to time if you do want some pedal steel on any of your tracks please message me because I can record it at home and send it to you but I don't very often gig it really because there's not a lot of opportunity to it's a bit of a pain in the neck to take on gigs um, but I was asked to do it I posted because I posted a little clip of me playing it on Instagram and John, who I will show you in a minute on the video, messaged me saying, do you want to do a gig or no? And I thought, do you know what? Yes, I do. So John is a guitarist in the band and he runs the band. And I used to cycle with John many years ago. And also, interestingly, the person on keyboards on this is Peter, who I was at university with. We lived opposite each other in our halls of residence. And uh, since university, Peter went on to work in the West End. He carried on working in music. He worked on Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals and he worked with Stephen Sondheim. And now he's an airline pilot. He's a very low achiever. Um, anyway, he's behind playing keyboards on this. And I'd also like to thank his son, Quinn, who on this first clip I'm going to show you, he filmed it. Most track recorded, mixed it and sent it to me. He also did the live sound on the gig. So thank you very much, Quinn, for sending me this. So again, I used the Quad Cortex on this gig in a very different way, so I'd never used it before. I was pleased I thought of this because I have actually got, I think it's a good rich um, volume pedal for my pedal steel because you, you do a lot of that swell stuff with the pedal steel. But even though it's a really good quality one, it's still the pot can be noisy in it and I can hear it. And I thought to myself, do you know what? I'm going to use my Quad Cortex because that has an optical uh, potentiometer or whatever you call it in it, so it doesn't make any noise. So I set up a gain block on my Quad Cortex with the delay as well, which gave me a nice sound into my pedal steel mini, which is the first time I've used that for the purpose it was designed for. And I also used my Telecaster because there were a few songs that lent themselves more to normal guitar. Um, so I plugged into the other input on the Quad Cortex and I set up a separate signal chain, going out to the same amp, but a separate signal chain with all my guitar effects on. So I could mute the guitar or turn the volume down or go on the pedal steel. And when I finish with the pedal steel, take the volume pedal off, pick up the other one. Very clever. Two for the price of one. So here we are. I'm going to show you this first clip. This was the one that Quinn sent me with his mix um, of me playing pedal steel. Some things don't ever end, some things they won't change. But you will always be here, you will always be the same. And I sing your songs and stories, I play my old guitar. We will sing together, no matter where you are. Cause I really like to meet you, Mr. Cash. Yes, I really like to meet you. Then just a little clip, this was actually sent to me by Glenn, this is of me playing my Telecaster just so you can hear what it sounded like in the room and hear what the Telecaster sounded like through that amp. I have to say, actually I didn't really nail the sound on that, I need to fiddle around on the Quad Cortex and get more like the sound I would get if I was using my normal pedal ball, but I know it's achievable and I'm going to do it next time I do the gig and I will show you then. Anyway, there's a little clip of me playing the Telecaster through my pedal steel mini Milkman. Never seen a dog Now, as I said, 
these gigs I'm showing you aren't in chronological order and this next gig I'm going to show you came right after the ABBA gig. The ABBA gig was the third gig on the trot. I'd done two solo gigs, just singing, playing the guitar with the loop pedal. I go and do gigs on my own in bars and stuff. And I'd done, so I'd done four sets over the last previous two days, um, just solo acoustic guitar. And then I did the ABBA gig. Now we had a set of eight or so songs and we played them four and a half times through within a four hour, four hour period. And by the end of it, because I wasn't doing any looping, normally when I do acoustic guitar gigs, I loop and I solo. With the ABBA stuff, I was literally strumming the whole way through, apart from that little Mamma Mia intro that I showed you. So by the end of it, my back was killing me, my legs were killing me, but most of all, the ends of my fingers were burning. My wrist here oh, was absolutely killing me, and I was shattered. I'd played for probably seven hours on acoustic guitar over the previous three days. So I went home. Nobody else was at home. I thought, I'm going to have a little nap. Woke up, looked at my phone. Can you do a gig tonight? A band that I sometimes step in. The guitarist had a family emergency and they needed me to step in. And what was the first thing I thought? Yes! I love playing. So I just got my gear ready. It's a kind of rocky gig. And I had this photo in my mind that I saw on Facebook recently. So if you've watched my videos recently, you'll know that my latest purchase is that guitar, that Les Paul. And my previous purchase was, hang on, this guitar, which I got for my birthday just before Christmas. It was a big birthday. I don't normally get presents this expensive. So having seen that, this is a photo of my setup once I got to the gig. And I have to say, this is the first time I think I've ever gone to a gig without a single coil in the car. Well, apart from the dummy one there, but that's not wired up, so it doesn't count. So I was all on humbuckers for this gig, which I think might be the first time ever. And what I'm going to show you on these clips was I got my sound in a different way to usual as well. There's a couple of bits where I used a clean sound and I didn't have any pedals on, but I was using my car Viceroy amp and I've got um, an exotic SL drive, which is a kind of Marshall in a box. And what I did, I had that set, not too much gain, but I had on the second set, I pretty much left that on the whole time and then just rhythm sound just I did everything on the volume knob on the guitar or this guitar or that guitar whichever one I was playing and I got some pretty good sounds and the reason I took this guitar is because I knew that we played jump in the set so I'm going to show you that solo first I've never learned that solo note for note so I just do my own thing on it but this is how I got the sound with the Marshall pedal and this guitar so check this out <laughs> clip I'm going to show you a different Marshall sound but I think it's the same amp that Eddie Van Halen and Paul Kossoff used or same type of Marshall I think let me know if I got that wrong but they're plexis and uh, we did all right now and I thought I got a pretty good Paul Kossoffy sound using that guitar and I was really trying to get that fast vibrato that Paul Kossoff gets and I think I got pretty close I'm not going to show you the whole solo because I've shown the whole solo from all right now before and YouTube has detected it and it doesn't give me a copyright strike but it gives you a copyright thing, can't remember what it is, so I'm going to try and avoid it, I might not. Anyway, check this out, this is a bit of the solo from all right now. more gigs to show you these were actually from the previous week I want to show you this one um, it was my trio and we did Johnny Be Good and I was quite pleased with the way this solo came out and I didn't show it in the previous video so I'm going to show it this week it's Ralph on drums who played on my last album and I worked with quite a lot if you've watched my videos before you would have seen him many times and Clint on bass it was the first time that uh, the three of us have played together as a trio we normally play in a sort of 10 piece show band together but this was us under reduced circumstances it was great Clint's a fantastic bass player he's just been on tour with Ruby Turner and he plays with Boney M he travels all over the world with one of the 
official Boney Ems. He's a brilliant bass player, actually lives quite locally. And uh, yes, yeah, so we did this, and this was jolly be good. Pretty pleased with the way this came out. Gear-wise, I'm using my car Viceroy. I'm using my, is it? can you see it there? It's my 56 Custom Shop Closet Classic Strap, which I've had about 20 years. And I think I'm probably using my Keeley Modified Blues Driver for the drive on this sound. But yes, this is Johnny Be Good. See if you like this solo. So that last clip and this clip, if you're interested, I multi-track record the gig using my um, Allen Heath CQ18T, which is my new digital desk, which enables you to multi-track. And I've done a review on that, if you're interested, so check that out here. I'm gonna leave you with this clip now. This is uh, Hotel California. Now, I have had copyright strikes playing this song before, so I'm not gonna play the bit that is off the record and I actually did do this solo note for note and I haven't got this right really before but I did get it right this time I've got it right a couple of times but I did get it right but anyway I'm going to show you the bit after the worked out bit the bit where I'm just mucking about doing my own thing and I decided to do a silly Van Halen tapping thing and I wanted a bit of extra boost to make the tapping work better hit one of my drive pedals and it was right next to the phaser pedal and I accidentally hit the phaser pedal but I thought it sounded pretty cool actually so I'll probably do that again next time. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video I bring out new videos at 7pm UK time every Friday please hit like hit subscribe and leave me a comment also I'd like to know how many of my viewers live in the Brighton area in the UK because I'm uh, looking at putting some gigs on and I'm wondering how many people might come and see me playing if I do so please let me know if you are local and you might be up for coming to see some gigs Anyway, hope to see you next week.